Uh, my name is John Bauer from Oasis Digital, and I'm going to do a short presentation on converting a simple Angular application into TypeScript. Uh, for this presentation, I've just taken the PhoneCat, the Angular PhoneCat tutorial application from the uh, Angular website, and I'm just going to go through converting a couple simple files. So, the first one I want to show is how to convert a service to TypeScript. So I brought up this services.js file on the bottom half of the screen, and then the top half is what I've converted to TypeScript. So the first thing you'll notice is that Angular PhoneCat has provided us with a factory, but in order to do, use this in TypeScript, we really want that to be a service. Um, when you convert your services and factories into TypeScript, they end up becoming classes, and in order to use a class, you need to use a service. So that's the first thing I've done. <clears throat> um, the previous factory just returned a single function, which return uses uh, it injects dollar resource, and then it manipulates that dollar resource functionality a little bit and returns that. Well, a service can't just return a single function, so we've manipulated it a little bit. I have a class called phone service. Um, this first line is where we do our dependency injection. That is the equivalent of the bracket syntax, the array syntax down here. Uh, and then I've created a constructor for the class, which is where these dependencies actually get injected. Um, so <clears throat> a few things about the constructor. There are a few things specific to TypeScript here. One is the private. This is telling TypeScript that this dollar resource can only be used within the constraint of the, within this constructor. Well, we don't have any constructor code here, but uh, if we tried to reference dollar resource outside the constructor, we might get a compilation error when we, tr when we tried to compile this to JavaScript. Um, I've also given it, uh, so dollar resource is the name that's being, of what's being injected. And on the other side of the colon is the type of the object that's being injected. This type is not something I've created. There's actually a tool out there called Definitely Typed, which is a large repository full of different JavaScript libraries where somebody has created type definitions for all these objects and all these libraries and made them available. So I think if I, yeah, so if I right click into here, we can see that they've created this iResource service to represent dollar resource and I'm not going to go into the type definition, but someone's already created a definition of what dollar resource should look like and what uh, object, what properties and functions should be available to us. Um, so a minute ago I mentioned that you shouldn't be able to use dollar resource outside because we marked it with this private. Well, on constructors, TypeScript actually does a little bit of magic behind the scenes and it sees that we've injected that we've supplied our constructor with a private dollar resource and it goes ahead and creates a property on phone service called dollar resource so now I can reference this dot dollar resource throughout the pro throughout the service <clears throat> so now that we've injected dollar resource I've given it to the constructor function I'm going to create a new property on a new property on the phone service class called resource. And what that's going to do is it's basically the equivalent of this function right here. I've just copied and pasted that says when you call phone service dot resource, this is what you're going to get returned is this resource query. <clears throat> and we'll see how that's used when I go into the controllers. Um, then down here on line 10, this is the equivalent of line 1 below. This is where we're setting up our, registering our Angular module. Just the same way, this time I've, uh, I've said that the PhoneCat services, which is uh, containing our module, is a type of ng.i module. Uh, it's not that important for something as simple as this, but if we were going to do more things on the module, this is another type definition for what is available to us through a module. If I tried to call something on PhoneCat services that isn't provided to us through iModule, 
this would uh, throw an error at that compile time. Then I say phonecat services.service, give it the name of the service, just like we did before, except instead of giving it a, sh a function for that service, I actually give it the class. So this takes our class and registers it as a service, which is available to us by injecting phone later in our application. So to show how this is used, I'll switch over to the controllers file, show a quick example of controllers. So again, down below, this is the original JavaScript file. So we're creating a new module called PhoneCat Controllers. And on that, I'm going to register a controller called Phoneless Control, where I pass in dollar scope and our phone service. Um, then all the controller does is initialize the scope.phones to phone.query using that query function of the phone service. And then it initializes the order prop to a string of age. <clears throat> so one thing I would do differently here is your controllers become classes and it's going to be a lot easier if you set up your Angular applications to use that controller as syntax. Uh, we haven't done that right here so we're going to keep injecting phone but if we were to use our <clears throat> If we were to use our controller as syntax, instead of saying scope.phones, I would say $this.phones. And these would become properties of this class. Um, but we're just going to go with a straight conversion of uh, the, what they've done to TypeScript. Created a new class called phone control, phoneless control. Use this dollar inject again because we don't have any kind of ng annotate service on the back end. We're, uh, explicitly injecting these services. So I'm injecting dollar scope and dollar phone. Here I've done the same thing with the constructor. Uh, dollar scope, I've given a type of phoneless scope. So to see what that is, I've created a new type definition that extends the scope definition provided to us through that definitely type library. There are a lot of things dollar scope gives us, but we're also going to put a couple things on scope, like phones and order prop that I want to be available through that scope. So I'm going to extend what's already provided to us through dollar scope by adding a new property called phones, which is going to get this I resource array. That's what's returned to us by using dollar resource. It's also going to have a property called order prop, which is a simple string. By providing these types again, once I use them within the application, if I try to, if I try to do something with order prop, I try to do something that, some kind of uh, number uh, manipulation on it, it's going to give me an error because it says order prop must be a string. So in my constructor, I've injected dollar scope and dollar phone, and the constructor function looks a lot like the function we gave it below. So when you initialize it, scope dot phones is set equal to phone.resource.query instead of phone.query. Remember, because I had to make phone a service instead of a function. The phone service now has a resource property from which I can call query. Order prop is initialized to age just like before. Can I interject a question? Yes. How hard was it to do all this? How long did it take to convert this small to sample application? To Once I understood how to do it, it doesn't take very long at all. Um, was there a lot of thinking, or was it mostly mechanical? For something this simple, it's mostly mechanical. I mean, all we're doing is initializing our scope. We're plopping two properties on the scope. So doing that is pretty easy. You just, when your constructor function set up, when we initialize this class, I want to plop these two things on the scope. Okay. Yes? And you're deliberately keeping this as close as possible to, like, the original Angular Phone Cat app. Um, yes. Do we have a moment to say, like, how you would approach this differently if you weren't trying to keep it uh, as close to the original app as possible? I can do that, yeah. Uh, so in just a couple minutes, I can go over how I actually would have written this. Um, oops. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of my TypeScript function where we actually set up our Angular. So far, this has all been TypeScript code. I haven't done a whole lot of Angular stuff in here. This dollar inject, maybe. But this is where we actually register it as an Angular controller. And just like we did the service before, 
you give it a name and then pass it your class and <clears throat> when this compiles it'll take the constructor function of this class and use that to instantiate the controller. So the way I would have done this, uh, let's actually get rid of this old. So we'll get rid of the old one. So instead of injecting dollar scope, we're going to use the controller as syntax. So I can just delete a few things here. I still need to inject my phone service. Um, All right, so I no longer, I'm no longer using dollar scope. So I don't need to create that phone list interface anymore. Now I'm putting these on the controller. So I need to define properties on this controller and give them a type. Uh, I can do that right here within the class. And you saw that uh, <clears throat> my editor gave me a little, some errors before see these turn red because it's saying you're trying to assign something to this dot phones well this doesn't have a property called phones and if I were to uncomment that but comment this oops well, that's still gonna let me do something let's say I try to make that a type of string that's going to give me an error as well. It's saying you're trying to assign this string property, but you're giving it something that's not a string. Again, all this TypeScript stuff is at compile time. Uh, you can still break things as you're uh, within your code, but this makes sure at the time you set it up, anytime you reference phones, you're referencing a, something of this type. Um, so I think that's about it for this. Um, of another course, question from back here, though. another it's, question. Yep, yeah, still looking for the answer about how, how all you would have done it differently. Is it just this is the only thing you would have done differently? Well, it, um, so then you still have to manipulate. Oh, uh, what's my So then in my config function, sorry, when I set up my config, I set up my routing, we'll do the controller as. So you would have switched to controller as. Right, yeah, no, I'm sorry, I, I might have skipped over that. Okay, other than changing the controller as, is there any other kinds of things you think should be done differently to more fully use TypeScript? To more fully use TypeScript uh, in this simple function? Or is this already looking pretty I good? I think this is pretty good where it's at right now. Uh, again, there's there's not much to this controller, so I think this is a good use of TypeScript here. Um, we were uh, asking each other back here. Um, one of the common uh, idioms in current Angular One applications is to like define your Angular interface at the top of a file and then define all the functions and make it up after that. But we noticed that you're defining the classes and then doing the Angular stuff at the end. Is that like will it let you? Will it let you like make forward references to classes, or do you have to? Like, was it, is it valid to put that crap at the top? I believe it's still valid to do this. Dude, what you're saying is yeah. put this up here. Yeah. We were talking, neither one of us knows the answer. Okay, and he didn't have any errors pop up. So, yes. So right, my, my, my IDE thing sets okay. Yeah. So. IDE. <laughs> cool. Okay. Any other questions? All right. I hope to in the future have a little more in-depth presentation on TypeScript, but Thank you. just for doing something simple, this should work.